Booyaka Shaw, welcome back to another episode of Can't Handle the Heat. It's your boy G Swizz. Join on my left, Jokesy. Say what's up, Jokesy. Paul, oh, how's it, boys? Below me, Micah Ma'a. How are we doing, Micah? What's up, everybody? Again, this is not a solo dolo episode with the dolos. We're getting on the Rattle Pair Poonoff, who I know our viewers really, really wanted to see. So we're like, let's catch up with him. Let's see where he is and uh, how his pro season's going. But also, before I get to that, I want to say one quick thing. You know what I'm going at, baby. Add System 20, Dr. Price's Electrolytes, Add System 20 for 20% off. Link in the bio. Help support us, please. It means a lot to us if you could. Another way to support us and get some swix, uh, some sick swag. Link in the bio, again, for some Add System merch. It's sick. We got plenty in stock. Again, support the boys. Support the channel. Link in bio. Thank you guys so much. Anyway, we're going to waste no time here. We're going to get Rattle right on the show right now. Again, Rattle Parapuno. And we're back with the Rade Parapunov. As you can see, he's repping the out of system because he is out of system. One big thing that people are wondering. Well, first of all, how you doing, Rado? How you doing, my man? I'm good. I just finished practice. Came home from dinner. People, are, well, people have no idea where you are. So why don't you explain your situation from? Well, you should, let's go where you are and then what happened and your schedule. What happened when the national championship ball, last ball, dropped and then where you are now. All right, so yeah, I'm wondering this. I'm definitely wondering where Rado went. <laughs> I signed a contract in Vojvodina. The team is called Vojvodina. It's in Novi Sad, Serbia. I'm in the land of Milan. <laughs> yeah, the most respected oh. person in Serbia, Milan Zakrovic. Let me tell you that. Is he you like that there? Is it like that there? Is he like a god there? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. dude. Solid, like, solid. Really? So, he is? Dude, you can't imagine like how much respect I have for that guy really not as much as we have for him yeah dude like everyone like he was the coach for most of their national team gen generations the juniors and everything so yeah basically i would say 70 percent of the serbian volleyball players have gone through him in the national team whoever has been in the national team okay a few of my teammates were actually with him so yeah after we dropped that last ball I went to Bulgaria, joined the national team. We went to Italy, we played Vienna, we got our ass kicked. <laughs> then I got kicked out of national team and then came to Serbia. Wait, why? Well, because oh. I, uh, I, I did not play a good Vienna. I, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I did not have the Joe Worsley mentality with me. You know? I forgot my Joe Worsley t-shirt. I have it right here, always me. Define the moment. My favorite quote, by the way. Define the moment is my favorite quote as well. Dude, that's it's the still, worst. It still begs for a set. Just oh, crazy. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Dude, I, I was there. I forgot my shirt and then, yeah. Dude, I was there when they made that shirt. I was remember I went to Joe. was like, well, first of all, I remember the discussion beforehand. They were like, okay, Joe's going to make this shirt. Everyone's going through like a manufacturer. And Joe's like, I don't want to spend the money. He's like, okay, okay, okay. That's not it at and all. That's he's not like, it at all. There's like a cheaper solution. Was, there's this girl in art. There's this cheerleader in art class. <laughs> that is and not how it went like, down. Dude, I just remember you taking us and going to the back and just they're working like sweatshop kids in the back. Just <laughs> <laughs> the crappiest material. <laughs> the crap. Like, like Joe. Like you sell. Is this you're, legal? <laughs> he's like, no, this is absolutely not legal. <laughs> Uh, she asked if she could do it. I'm like, yeah, I I, I wouldn't think about about it at all. She's it's like, how much it costs? I can get you these shirts. I can get you a hundred for ten dollars. <laughs> and you didn't and you didn't want to look cool. into how she was getting that done. <laughs> Anyways, well, deals. She's like, just don't ask questions. I can get you these five cents a piece. Like, all right, say less. <laughs> Those are so crappy, Joe. You like it? You worst. can't say. Micah, you can't say you've locked yourself. You haven't locked yourself into a deal like that before. What? I never locked myself into oh my deals God, like 100%. that. I don't do enough deals. Do all the deals. Well, anyways, well, wait. First of all, so they kicked you out, but th does that mean you're gonna get invited back, or what does that mean? Well, they just told me that I wasn't good enough right now to be in an actual team with them because they are European Championship is going on right now. Right. And yeah, I just didn't make the cut. So wait, I have a few. I have a few things. One, before we get off the topic of shirts, really quickly, 
Gage's shirt, senior shirt. And so I also think this is where this came from because senior shirts were a football thing um, in Hawaii and somehow became like a thing for volleyball players at UH. I don't know where that transition happened, but Gage's can be up there for one of the top three that I've, that I've seen. Top one. And and we sport that. Me and Joe, every night that we were out on the tour, we wore our Gage Worsley senior shirts. And I think actually one night, McSlunks did too. He did. I think we were all wearing it. We yeah. didn't go out without that shirt. That was our uniform. And that's a uniform. shirt. And that, that shirt was worn by... Uh, that, that shirt brought so much ridiculous, unwanted attention. How many people could people come up to us like, dude, to who it. is that on your shirt? Oh, yeah. They, I switched shirts with somebody for like <laughs> half the night. Remember that old guy at that country place? <laughs> Gage, did you hear about that? No. Dude, there, there's got to be a picture somewhere. Maybe I'm we could throw that in right there. Now. I'm pulling it up right now. Do you have the photo? Oh, yeah. I Dude, yeah. I completely switched shirts. This guy and this guy was wearing a collared like polo shirt, and it was tiny on <laughs> Like me. a jersey swap? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what this guy's name, but he was, he was so funny. And Here. I saw him at Nationals the next day, and he was, he was watching his kid play, and I'm like, Dude, <laughs> this is just... What a legend! Wait, Rado, did you, Rado, did you ever? Make there's, a there's a the picture. There's the picture. Dude, I sold that picture somewhere. Rado, <laughs> Rado. all the way vul- is a big hit in vulgar. Wait, Rado, Rado, did you, did you ever make a senior shirt? Uh, no, because it was way too expensive to put Joe Worsley's face on my t-shirt. Because my vision was, you know, have Joe's face in the front, and then relationships are not good in the back. And number nineteen, you know. But yeah, it was like super expensive. And then like, I didn't have as many chick fans like join college to do them for free for me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, because of the pandemic, I couldn't actually see them in class. So it's like, so I did not. That's why it. the pandemic held you back. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's <laughs> yeah. Not, like, not because every girl hated me in school for my last right. year, but. Not that at all. Yeah, that was not, not at, at all. all. Wait, so who are the opposites? I'm jumping all around. Who are the opposites on the national team? There's Sokolov, actually, like, obviously. And then who's their the second driver. opposite right now? <laughs> the, uh, the opposite, the other one is uh, this called Belizar Chernokozhev. He's two years old than I am, and he's two meters and 13 centimeters tall. You gotta wow. get you gotta get huge. Feet. That is huge. Yeah. What is that, 7 1? <laughs> Bro, we're all in Europe. There is no feet here. Do it in centimeters. Oh crap! We all. Oh. He's like seven feet. He's seven feet. Oh, Gage, you don't do centimeters. How tall are you in centimeters, Gage? You got to know this. I don't. I'm just gonna say 163 centimeters. No, you're probably like 180. <laughs> That's a munchkin. 180. <laughs> you're, a munchkin. you're a munchkin. <laughs> I don't know the metric system. Dude, the only reason I know k- kilograms is because they measure my weight. And I have a story about that. Oh my god. <laughs> That's another story. Well, they're on uh, diet. Uh, dude, I have a little... funny story about my weight. Okay, you That's why they're working you so hard in all those videos because you came in. Uh, dude, what okay, okay. Bulgaria, bro? Okay, but but sorry. Back to back to the Bulgarian national team. So there's yeah. a ginormous backup opposite. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, and he's yeah, two he's years really older good. than you. He's really good. And then they just like... Okay, Sokolov, I think he's currently the best top in the world. But yeah, yeah there's was, no debating he's top. There's no debating he's top three. Big top three guy, yeah. huh, Micah? He's top three, but he's not three, and he's not two. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. 100%. But but I think yeah, yeah. I think he's he's an animal. Dude, his out of system ability to swing is just oh my god. He should be part of our brand, dude. But he has dude. his own brand too. So. Yeah, that guy is next level. Yeah. We played Bulgaria, and that guy single-handedly beat us. He sp- I think he's like was like 75% in attack. And yeah, everyone else was like nine. terrible. And I was like... 75%? Dude. It was in it was in Joe's. It was actually ridiculous. Like We shut down everyone else, and we were playing so well, and we just couldn't... I think we hit like, fi- like 55 to 60%, and he beat us. We're like, no, there's nothing we can do about this. Dude, when he gets mad, it's just crazy. 
you it's so it's so funny because because Europeans and older players like people don't understand this but like a lot of it is just if they want to play and I know that sounds funny but it's like in no, it's professional volleyball true. it's like dude these guys will put, like they just play until they like actually want to play and you're like holy cow these guys are so good when they actually want to play but they just never want to they just like they decide no so funny story about that so i come to i'm coming to serbia right and then the first day we get together like everyone it's like 20 of us and then the coach like about my weight he just, there's like I can definitely see you've been five years in America because, like, that ass is fat. Mm. Hell yeah, it is. I was like, okay. Was he and the other thing about you, playing, that like, yeah, they were just like, you? huh? Was he hitting what? on you? Or, 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 no, he was just making fun. I'm fat. <laughs> that ass is fat, oh. boy. <laughs> Come over here. Like <laughs> yeah. One on one. Like, Coach on one. Fat. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just say, like, how fat I am. And then. It was just like, don't worry about it. We have like a few important games. Like it was not about it. Okay, the season is important. It's like, hey, we have playoffs. We have this. We have that. So it's kind of like pick those games. Like you gotta play. Yeah. It wasn't so like in you... America. Like every game because like a championship and you gotta win. It's like, all right, we gotta be finish first and then there's playoffs. So like, your so. team is the uh, is supposed is supposed to be the top team in Serbia. Yeah, yeah, they won the championship last year, so we are going Champions League this year, and yeah. Okay, who's on We are on contending that team? to win again. What? Who else is on that team? All right, so we have this one Russian outside. His name is Rafael Miguel. He's <laughs> yeah, Cuban, awesome. born he's... and raised in Ukraine, moved to Russia. Okay. And everybody else is Serbians. Does that I mean their family's think... communist? Just out of curiosity. Just um, <laughs> quick. Just dead silent after that. Hell no. Okay. No. You know. If you know, okay. no. Fair enough. Yeah. No, communists are bad what, people, right? What, what other uh, Serbians are on that team? There's few people in my generation that have played. His name is one of the outsides, David Mehic. There is a bunch of their national team as well. Our captain, he was the fourth middle in the VNL. He is a middle blocker. And yeah, a bunch of young guys. I'm one of the oldest here. Like, really? Yeah, we are super, super young. Wow. Like That's I'm awesome. 24 and I'm old. Wow. So if you guys play like, I don't know how they say it in America again, tennis? Yeah, I'm with really? the old guys. Yeah, I'm with really the old guys. Right. Tennis. You're with the old? Dude, I'm with the old. I'm like, literally, I think wow. I'm like the fifth oldest or the fourth oldest. Jeez, that's kind of gnarly. Well, I've also saw that the Bulgarian youth team is nasty. Yeah. We got second. Dude, that team is good. I the think this is... is going to Long Beach, yeah? The top half side is going to yeah. Long Beach? No, yeah. no, no, no. That guy is going to Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's going to Long Beach. The son of what's the what's the guy's name? The coach, yeah, Vladimir Nikolov, the opposite. His yes. son. Yeah, he signed with Long Beach. Dude, that is re dude. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna tear that league up. Bro, I don't think I think he only got know. offers from Santa Barbara or Long Beach. Holy where's Hawaii? Snap. Where's Milo Milo yeah, Where is Hawaii on that? Are you uh, dumb? He said it was too far from home. It's basically the same thing. It's, so you're going that far? You're 12 hours away. What's another five? Six. Five and a half. I mean, dude, because they want to go visit him and just Hawaii's very, very far away. Dude, Bulgaria's damn near in Asia. So and Hawaii's close to Asia. It's literally a, already going to be a day or more travel. Just what? It really just, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that bad. Wait, Rado, I want to get into this. I want to. I have a question about this. This whole diet. Wait, so, are you on a diet? Because I, I have a funny story about my diet and uh, how they broke it to me. So, uh, are you on a diet right now? Like, uh, did the coaches make you go on a diet? Yeah, yeah. I need I to go eat in the club every day, whatever they cook for me. So, do you, you get fed meals, right? Yeah. 
so that they can like control what you're eating, right? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Our so okay, the breakfast is the only thing that I cook by myself. But we went to this nutritionist and we got tested, blood test, and all that stuff, so they can tell us what our bodies can digest and what they cannot. Basically, kind of help us right. with everything. So I turns out that uh, in America, I turn out to be, I am lactose intolerant right now. So I haven't had any dairy in two months since I've been here. No, I'm sorry, a month. And I've lost around, I would say 15 pounds just by. What? Just not eating food, just completely shitting down eggs. Two months? And there, yeah, 15 pounds. Dude. Like I was, I don't know, I was 236 when I left. I'm two, around 215, 210 right now, 210 to 15. Just by like all those things. Jeez. And so our, 20, my dad is basically pounds. consists of the stuff that I can eat and does not include what I cannot. And how'd you find that out? I've never done that kind of test. I should look into that. Okay, all right, so there's not. this. No, it's, it's kind not, of like detox not, center. I can send you the stuff. So they, no. you go there, you do, does that blood work and they tell you what are you compatible with, what kind of food you're compatible with. It's like, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sick. actually. Not to like, like I need to feel like I need to lose a lot of weight, but it just sounds like beneficial what? for your body. No, cause Apparently. Gage was like, Micah, you don't need to do that. But I'm like, I'm just curious about like, that's fair. Dude, it's really yeah, good because like I've never felt I haven't felt bloated or tired or anything since I've been doing this. Dude. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna look into that a little bit. That, not in yes, Bulgaria over here, man. I also love that the the Eastern European like or just like the European version of like science and health. I like, think I just, it's just way just, better than the, the West. The doctors are smoking just, cigarettes. It's, it's I just, pretty I just ironic. Love it. I just love it. Like it's so simplified. And like old, but yet good. Like I, it's like they kept the good stuff. They didn't get rid of everything. Does that make sense? <laughs> Look, I'm actually being serious. Like Amer- America is just so like overdone. Yeah. Where here it's just like they just know th- this is good for you. Too. <laughs> this is no need to minimize costs. Let me tell you. Let me t- let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay, I'm experiencing that firsthand right now. So I'm gonna tell you my diet story that I'm on right now. So I show up to Bulgaria. Before Bulgaria, obviously we were on the on the of course Addison tour, and then I go and I go home. And my Where mom we gets only strict ate diet. gas station food and sweet but tea and barbecue. Yeah, but that's normal for me. That's that's a, that's a that's a libero diet. I mean, Rado knows what I'm talking about. Come on now, Rado. Um, so then and then I go home and then I eat there because because my mom makes delicious food and then I have Taco Bell a bunch because they're at work or something like that and then. I go to Denver. They're at work. You eat Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> parents are at work. I'm 24 out of college. Oh, my parents are at work. I'm so 22. Taco Bell. Sorry, 22. But you get the point. Whatever. Oh, yeah. my parents are out. I got to go eat Taco Bell. <laughs> no, they don't eat much anymore. So they have nothing in the fridge or the freezer. I'm like, Mom, <laughs> where's the Tostitos? Not there. Whatever, man. So then I go to Denver to visit Jenna. And, oh uh, and the two weeks I'm there, I'm just like on a freaking bend. I'm like, this is my last week, two weeks in America. I'm just editing and eating all day. I'm just sitting by the here, and like she brings me, food. I go pick her up. She brings me food because they have so much food there. I'm like, ah, and steak, every, you know, just eating crazy amounts of food. Not really working out whatsoever. Because editing for the brand. So I show up here. <laughs> I show up here. They don't do any weigh-ins. They, they're fine, right? But a week goes by, or no, two weeks goes by. On Flash Friday, they bring me in my venti. We don't have a we don't we don't have a uh, uh, what's it called a trainer uh, like a medical trainer. We don't have a like. He, there's one guy who does it all. He's our he's our he's the guy in the video. He's like boom boom like yelling like push push. He's <laughs> dude, what I can do phenomenal. Here. Dude, it, he's phenomenal. He's my favorite, venti. And he goes and he's like, Gage, step on the scale, and it says. 93 kilos and for those of you who don't know for those of you who don't know that's about 205 <laughs> so remember Dude, we he, looks at, he, like, he looks at it he looks at it he looks at me he's like step off step off he's like let it go zero and then step on again just to make sure that was right <laughs> he's, he's like slapping the I step on again he's like I step on again 
And we have this small assistant coach. I don't know if you guys have ever seen like uh, uh, Star Wars, you know, Jabba the Jabba the Hutt's little minions, like ee! like laughed at the back. I step on it again. <laughs> he's like, this guy's like a lep. He's my favorite. I love this guy. He's like, like, like a leopard guy. He's like super small. He's like sitting down. So it looks even smaller. <laughs> he's like, ee! he starts laughing at me. He just like like leopard. I'm like, shut up, bro. <laughs> I don't say that to him. So he starts. He's like, oh my god. So so the weekend goes by. We have Sunday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Monday, it's also funny weeks. when that kind of stuff happens and and like they start talking and you know what they're saying yeah, but it's in yeah. a different language and you're like oh this is not good but you're just so on the outside <laughs> but you know what's going on they're like oh mm-hmm. yeah and they're looking at each other like i don't know should we do this should we do that are you serious this guy's really this heavy <laughs> like all that kind of stuff it's so funny to see them do that dude and then so so monday you're first of all you're right this this is the real experience where i had it Monday comes around. My head coach wasn't there for my, my last weigh-in. I go to a weights. He's like, my coach like smiling at me. He's like, Gagey, come here. Walks to the back of the gym. Go where my where my where Venti is as well. He's like, step on the scale. I'm like, all right, no one's coming here. <laughs> so I step on the scale. <laughs> he's like, says ninety three kilos. You he's step like, you step like, on as lightly as possible. Yeah, the like, light like, step on. <laughs> try and take some weight off it. of it. <laughs> Just like breathe out. <laughs> Hey, coach, give me five minutes to see Gage yeah. take out the back. Just do a sprint in the back. <laughs> Come back. Yeah, I can do <laughs> You got a sweatsuit on that you've been wearing for days. You haven't drank you, you haven't drank water <laughs> since the last weigh-in. And then comes back like 80 kilos and like, ah, oh, must have been a mistake. Ah, oh, it was a mistake. Oh, the scale must have been wrong. Okay, you're good. They take you away. It's like the boxing, like the boxing weight <laughs> engaged. Yeah, it's like you're cutting weight. Eat. So okay, so I step on the scale, it says 93, and the coach goes, Peach Kiku today. There's stuff like that. Just like, oh, oh, oh. He's like, just like laughing. He's like, oh my god. And the and Betty's just like smiling at me. He's like, and they just they're just speaking to each other. Like I'm like, oh, I already know what it says. He's like, you need to and then Venti also has my friend at the end of every sentence. He's like, you need to go on a on a diet, my friend, or a nutrient. Like, we need to control. And he's like, he's like, and this is where it gets crazy. The coach is like, he's like, uh, he's like, you need to go, you need to lose ten kilos. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> I look at him. I'm like ten kilos. I'm like, okay. I do the kind of math. I'm like, twenty two pounds. <laughs> twenty two pounds. I'm like. I haven't been I haven't been like 184 or whatever it is pounds since the eighth grade. Like that is not like my <laughs> optimal like like weight to play in. I can play at 205 easily, and I get I was like okay maybe if I cut down like 10 pounds, but 10 <laughs> kilos or whatever kilograms or whatever it is, I'm like oh my god. So now they got me monitored. All I eat every day is chicken and cucumbers, and I love it. And they're giving me this. Oh, I'm starting to really hate this soup. It's like sour. It's like, what is it? The the, the the cucumber with the sour yogurt soup. You know what I'm talking okay, about? Okay, yeah. It? It's called yeah. Terator. Oh, my God. And it's like tart. And I'm like... and uh, it's, it's so it's, fucking it's, good. Oh, sorry dude, for swearing. Like, it's no, so we good. We don't care. We don't care. It's okay. Um, dude, and they got me... I have a funny story about that. Today, today, they fed me cucumbers with a little block of cheese. That's it. And then they just have a big plate. And then, bam, a small little freaking chicken breast in the middle. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And they literally got me running sprints all after. They got me doing like 15 minutes of skiing after. And the workouts here are two hours. And there's like seven blocks of it. And they're four sets each. And I'm like, what the hell? And they got me 15 minutes of skiers afterwards. And I'm drenching sweat. And then after practice, I'm like, oh my God. And I literally, right now, after three days of this, four days of this, I'm 190.6 kilos. I lost damn near like three kilos off this crazy. Just wait, wait, what? You're what? No, no, I'm not 90. 90. I'm 90. So I was 93. Now I'm 90.6. I'm losing weight rapidly. It looks like six pounds. I'm starving myself. All I have here is fruit. That's all I eat. All I eat here is fruit. And I go through it so quickly a lot of time because they don't feed me a lot of time. I'm like, I'm starving. All I do at night, I save till 2 a.m. I'm not kidding you. I live till 2 a.m. That's the worst you. idea. You're going to be okay. so hungry. I know. Just, just, Dude, I, you got to sleep. Dude, it gets, I go, I stay up to like late night just watching like California burrito videos in like, in like foods. That's all I do. And all that's I the talk worst about. I, that's the worst Dude. possible idea I could ever think of is to stay up late alone is so dumb because you always get hungry and you know, you're yeah. watching food videos. Dude, all I do. And then like, 
All I do is I talk to my teammates about Chipotle and I talk to them about burritos. It's like, do you guys realize what? Like, they have no idea what a burrito is. I'm like, no, that's no, no. That's a lie. That's dude, a lie. They, they said they had a burrito. A like, I was like, what was in the burrito? Idea. And they just, dude, I, no, like, dude, their burritos and tacos in Europe are not burritos and tacos. There's no Mexican food around here. Spanish is the closest. Wait, there's a copy Mexican. out of this, dude. I was looking, I was looking. There's the closest Taco Bell's to Romania, so I might have to take a dude. I literally can't eat anything. I'm, just, but I'm strict on this diet. Like I'm actually like really really into it. I'm sorry. Anyways, anyways, to go past this, one thing, what the main thing we kind of want to talk about in this podcast, the Rado, is Rado's role in out system because I think a lot of the fans we got because of the tour may not obviously that you're a big name, but may not know who you are kind of in the situation. So again, Rado and I played at Hawaii together with I mean with Joe as well, their Lord and Savior. Mike obviously played against us, so we were good friends from the beginning. The greatest person um, ever. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. So I want I want you to explain, Rado, what is your role in Adam's system? Where do you see your role? And then we'll explain where we see our roles. And then we'll, yeah, screw it, we'll all say our roles for those people wondering out there. All right. When I tell this story, I I want everyone just to listen very carefully. So my role with out of system was I was looking to find a way to connect myself to the greatest human being I've ever met in my life, mm-hmm. Joe Worsley. I had to find a way to be in his surroundings 24 seven, right? So what I did was like, hey, I wanna be on your podcast. And my job basically was uh, help grow because when we started, it was you two and that other kid. like uh, Max that, Rosenfeld. Uh, yeah, yeah, that kid. The OG. You know? The OG. <laughs> Man, oh man, I can tell you some stories about Max and our system. We, no, I'm actually no, one of my good never. friends, but we won't. And yeah, so I, what I help right now is basically I was put under content and my gauge, gauge is my supervisor. Not Joel, unfortunately. I got to find another way to get to him. But yeah, because he wouldn't actually call me or text me. So I was like, hey, man, I got to jump on that. And I probably, Michael, uh, that's his reason too for joining. And Michael and like Faye and everyone just like trying to connect to Joe. Like, Leech on. Like Leech on. Like, I saw you my t shirt here. <laughs> my favorite, my, my, the, the, my favorite day of the year is June 16, and, which happens to be Joe's birthday. Like, just a crazy, <laughs> crazy coincidence, you know? Do you know his, is he a Gemini or what is he? What does that mean? Do you know his? He's Gemini. Come on. He's Gemini. Right. But yeah, what I do was, I've never been on the podcast, actually, that's the first time. Uh, but yeah, basically content, TikTok, and stuff like that, trying to grow our European community. It's my job. And just to be as close as I can to Joe and help him with whoever he needs. The greatest advice he gave me, don't have a girlfriend in college. I won a championship, national player of the year. I won the Joe Wars Award. For and now you have a girlfriend. Huh? And now you have a girlfriend. I think that's why we lost the semifinal of Big West. Why? I think there was way too many guys in relationship on that court that night. I think it no was one, just No one much. broke up, though, for the national championship. Who broke up with a girlfriend? I think that me and Pat too, took it way too seriously, and you just, you as well, I'll say. I think you had your Joe Worsley in you that night. And Jacob, what? Jacob, yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about anymore. All right, so Rado's role. Sorry, Joe. Go ahead, Gage. No, you go. No, you go. No, I was saying so. Rado's role basically is to grow your. How would you say we're doing? All right, first of all, Joe. All right, so we got Rado here. Let me kind of, if I'm wrong here, um, Rado here again. European content creator. Micah, same thing. Podcast help. Podcast helps with the merch, and uh, content creator. Joe and answer all the emails and like I just I'm very up to date and did you answer top. all the emails? <clears throat> no, I just always answering my emails and like oh yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. and your texts for yeah sure. and my I'm just very punctual, very true. And then Joe here is the big CEO here. He runs all the business stuff oh. and everything. Obviously a content creator as well. He's our Lord and our Savior and a podcast host. And then me, I say I call myself the master. Wait, what did I call myself? I came up with this one day. I loved it. It was uh, the master of creativity. I just thought, I just like, I need an outrageous name that I could That's put your job maybe. title? Yeah, yeah, that I could put like on a card and be like, master of creativity. Thank you very much. Cause I, because the videos, everything, and then the merch as well. 
big part of it. And then Faye also, social media merch. Jake McSlunks, he just kind of – well, he, he, he he's not officially part of it, but he is part of it kind of. Um, McSlunks is as in it as you can get pretty much. That's true. He's deep in it. Um, McSlunks is – He's huge for the brand. Yeah, he is. He is. We're going to be sending him to a lot more, like, juniors tournaments here while we're over here. But anyway. What do you man, think about, I miss uh, that kid. Dude, that guy's a wild animal. Yeah. D- that guy wow, is next know. level, man. Red- Bro, you know he went to Texas this weekend? Did you see that, Micah? Oh, yeah. I saw it. Yeah, I saw I, it. I keep up to date with that guy. <laughs> he was, uh, they had, he had a good time. They had a good time, for sure. Rattle they uh, they got into every facility. I Listening to him being like, oh, with all his lingo, it's just so ridiculous. <laughs> dude, so dude Rado, you got you got to come. Oh when my we go gosh! On, when, we, when we go on another tour and stuff, you gotta you should. I mean, it's it's unreal. You missed. It was. I mean, obviously you were playing the national team, so I mean, it's not like you weren't doing anything. But dude, it's. Unreal. I need a visa now. I can't even go to the states now. Yeah, Red. I need to be sponsored by Joe Worsley. I think this will be the fastest way to get a visa. He needs he needs to Joe Wurzel will Joe talk to Wurzel. Joe. Joe will talk to Big Joe. He'll get you in the country. Yeah, I think. Hey, well, while, while we're on the subject, what do you guys think we need to do better? On a, like, I feel like I feel like we need to, like, for example, I, I think we like should we talk about to, Joe more. Wait, about no. about about what? Out of system? Like out of system? I feel like we should. Oh, I thought uh, you were talking about. Okay, I thought you were talking about something else. Okay, continue. Well, first of all, Rattle, Rattle. Well, Rattle's gonna get the camera soon. He's gonna hop on YouTube. So here's the here's the big problem for our listeners out here. We we are in a new state. Obviously, if you're DMing us or if you're contacting us in any way, here's the reason. We are kind of we're slowly and slowly getting a little more organized because we're all in such crazy settings. For me, like I want to pump out content, but I get here and I'm like, I'm dead tired. I I'm not fed a lot, so I'm like I'm hungry a lot of time, <laughs> and I'm just like laying. On the, I'm like I'm just like dead tired. I have to like close my eyes and just I have to kind of rest. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be like. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> exhausted. This weekend I have off and I bought food. I'm gonna be cooking a lot. Um, but I, I want to thing... see what your face is like when they bring out your plate. <laughs> you just like, seen it today. I want to, and I want them to bring out a giant plate with like, like two peas and a carrot in the middle. Dude, dude. And you're just really like, no. Today. <laughs> dude. And everybody else gets like this. And everybody nicest... else, yeah, 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 totally. Everyone around dude. him. They had chicken tenders and fries for everything else, and then bam, whoosh, I was eating my cucumber, just my cucumbers, and then bam, over my shoulder comes, bam, the chicken breasts. And I go and I pause and I look. I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I got in the table and I'm laughing. Sorry, mom. Sorry, I swore again. Um, but no, I think, I think so, so, so the problem is what, the, with the, the media, obviously we're not pumping out as much because officers are still, even though we've been here, like, I'm learning, I'm learning this. Like, even though we've been here like two and a half, three weeks, we're also kind of getting used to all the ropes and kind of settling in. Like it, it's not like a oh I'm here for a week, you know. It's like <laughs> it takes a little while, you know. And I think once that happens, we can all start producing stuff. I just love Joe. Aren't you just so happy that that he's just Joe and me just have big. What smiles did I give you? All right, so right up, basically what they're saying is I would always. Well, first of all, did I give you guys crap last year or something like that? Why are you guys so mad about it? No, I don't think we're mad. Uh, at least I am not mad about it at all. Did I criticize I'm just you guys so mad at all? I'm just so happy that you're on the same page as us more. What would I, did I not get stuff last year? No, it's just like, it's a whole different understanding. Like, it's just yeah. nice that you're on the same page as us. Yeah, that is nice. But anyway, yeah. so as, as we kind of get more and Wait, more. what is going on? So basically what they're saying is, is last year, obviously when we do the podcast, Joe, I, would, come on, I didn't realize it. I, I didn't realize it, but like, like sometimes I'd be like, oh, I'll do this or this. Or like, I haven't stayed up till like 1 a.m. Cause like, oh, we have to do this podcast this time you know because the schedule and everything like that so now they're like okay we're all on the same page on the same country and like i kind of get what they're talking about a lot of time because a lot of time and where they say completely over me because i lived in hawaii um dude yeah, so we had it so easy in college oh my god easy. we had it so easy we did i'll admit that dude i, I just miss all the food places <laughs> damn it got me thinking again about the food That's all i think about this literally all i think about while i'm over here yeah. gage how food. about those sliders from a place a to place tweet oh my god yes right now shut your mouth oh, joe <laughs> i'm gonna go get an apple god damn speaking it. of this though i think people should like all because of coronavirus as weird as this is start watching what we're eating because I heard a stat, and it's either 42 or 48. I have no idea. Joe Rogan is talking about it. 42%, let's say to be safe, of the U.S. is obese. 
That was before the pandemic. Dude, that's a one in every two. Pretty much. That is so ridiculous. That's so ridiculous. Anyways, not to go all ridiculous on you, but... And what's the... What's if the... you guys are listening to this, I think it's important. Maybe that's a next guest we need to bring in. We need to bring on a nutritionist. Dude, that could be questions. a really good idea. That would and be we could really and idea. we could bring gated stories up. And that would be a really them. good idea. Yeah, and Bro. that would be at least informational too. No, dude, it's it's crazy. Like I'm not like so we went to this nutritionist, and since like I made those simple things, like just my everything went up. Yeah, I need like, to do that. Do you feel? You better? said it was like a detox place. Dude, I feel way better. Like, we have. So we practice like crazy two hours in the morning, three hours in the night, and just keep like that going, going. And then we had three friendly games that went up to five sets each. And I'm fine. Like, I can go again. Like, before that, like, what I'll get tired. What the heck? Dude, Dude I we have practice a feeling that, like crazy. I have a feeling my diet is all over because I'm tired my entire what you, life. I can Dude, sleep what do you for eat? What do you eat years. That's hard. I have today. no idea. What do you eat? Like, what do you eat, like, in a day? Like, for right, right now? Day? Or Micah, oh no, actually, no, go rattle, go rattle, and then, and then, I mean, we should all talk about what we eat, well, screw it, we'll, well just, let's do it for me. the, yeah, we'll do it for the, the nutritionist, I think it's a good idea to have one on, eventually. Yeah, I mean, yeah. next week, not? I'm getting, re- I'm gonna get it, I'll schedule a nutritionist for next week. Hey, awesome. what are you guys doing, what are you guys doing for, uh, the, for, so, for people wondering, like, what, what happens during the holidays or anything like that for the pro, professional volleyball players? I know, no, no, no. But since we're all here, since we're all here, I think, I think that we should all meet up sometime during the holidays. That'd be kind of sick. Just depends, Easy. dude. Sometimes Easier you're gonna have a done. week. Yeah, you're gonna be like, oh, I have off like the twenty second to the twenty fourth, and we're gonna be like, oh, we we have off like a way different time. Really? Yeah. It's Just to start different. something. You know, I the, mean, that not, happened last year. That's why Joe didn't go to New Year's in Amsterdam. It was like. They yeah. all had it at a different time, so we went to Barcelona when they went there. That was a ha- that was a great time. Oh, that, that was, was a phenomenal. great time. That was a great that was a time. great trip. That Barcelona. was. We didn't even sleep that trip. We did not sleep. Dude, <laughs> we, we sleep showed up. Like... We had one pull out mattress for four dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Rado, <laughs> four guys. Guys. Rado, am I coming? I think I'm coming to your house for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, so funny thing about that. All right, so uh, Serbians are Orthodox Christian, and the same are Bulgarians. Like the Western Europe, they're Catholics, Eastern is mostly Orthodox, which, okay, so they celebrate their holidays by the old calendar, which uh, Christmas is on January 7th. And so basically (laughs) Christmas for me, there is no Christmas. We're gonna practice. Gage, you hear this? (laughs) <laughs> That's exactly why it's not a piece of cake, dude. Oh, I'll be yeah, on the seventh. That no, your Christmas is... isn't even Christmas where you live. <laughs> like you're Gage, over here, like oh, here we for... should all meet up for Christmas. It'll be a holly jolly no, no. Christmas. Like, dude, Gage, no, Christmas for you will be twenty fourth, twenty fifth. Okay, so I'll, 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 oh, I'll, okay. like, I'll be like, I'll be like, damn it. <laughs> Actually, who do I have to celebrate with? I got no one here. What am I talking about? Whatever, man. You can you can go find a tree. I have a question for Rado. Going off, tying it back. I don't know where we got talking about where Gage is going for Christmas. I is that I don't think people really <laughs> care where Gage is going for Christmas. <laughs> hey, thanks for the interest, guys. <laughs> like no one cares. I don't think people really care where Gage is going for Christmas. Hey, what are you guys doing for New Year's, <laughs> Rado? <laughs> so when you talk about, I want to. Th- I have two kind of things. When you talk about content that you want to create, what is what is your idea of like what you want to create? Because moving forward. Like for us, a huge thing is obviously monetizing things and figure out different ways for us to monetize things in order to grow. And I think we've made that clear, like whether it's through the merch or events that we do and moving forward, our connections with companies and stuff is going to be important as we want to continue to grow. And so that's going to be huge. But at the same point, we need to grow our platforms. And I think growing our growing our diversity and who's looking at our stuff and viewing our, viewing our content is super important. And I think like there is a lot of potential for us to do stuff in Europe and grow it from th- especially us being in all different leagues I think that's really cool because we have different markets to tap into so I wanted to ask you you have I mean you, you kind of listed what your role is but what are the like ideas like when, when we told you that what popped in your head 
and what are some things that we can expect for you and the viewers can expect to see? All right, so the thing is like, when you look at from a marketing perspective and try to reach into different markets, you gotta see what makes those people excited or like what makes them click on your page, you know, like which is the content and like, and how do you get that post to them so they can click and come on your page? And the big thing in Europe is ambassadors. Like, if Cristiano Ronaldo comes on Instagram tomorrow and says, hey, Out of System is the greatest brand ever, you should go buy that t shirt. 70% of his fans will just go and buy that t shirt without even looking into who we are. But they're going to rape our name, right? It's, it's going to be out there. And out of those 70%, we might get some, which actually stick around. So this is one of the idea I had. We talked about this. There are a few athletes that we're currently talking with, being our ambassadors, our big volleyball players, because we're trying to keep our core about volleyball, right? And that's what I'm talking. One of the things I'm working on right now is get important and big athletes into different leagues in Europe, try to represent basically. I, I won't share the names right now. Let's make it be a surprise and finish the first things first. Another thing is um, what I'm trying to do right now when I want to get a camera is try and show our current fans who is like being in Serbia. Like, because first of all, not many people know where Serbia is. Like, Gage did not know where Bulgaria is, and I'm Bulgarian. Mm. We've been in college together for four years. He did not know where I'm from. <laughs> Nope. Which That's says, not a surprise. Poor about it. the education system is just not good. Dude. That's another topic. But yeah, basically, <laughs> like show them what it feels like to be a volleyball player, because being a volleyball player in college is one thing, and being a professional athlete, be a professional volleyball player is a whole different thing. In college, you have school, you always have next year, right? Like you can have a bad season, but hey, don't worry about it. You're sophomore, you have your junior and senior here. And here, most of the contracts are one-year contract. And if you want to stay or stick around for the second year, you got to make sure that this season is really good, right? And like, how do you do with that? And like, show them around how it's, what it feels like to start your season in October. We start October and I think our last game is in May. And like, how does that go? Like those eight months, and like, cause there's like few different tournaments. Like there's the super cup we play our Super Cup is October 5th. It's for something like the Super Bowl, I'd say. And then we have the Cup, which is, I think, mid-February. Then we have the Championship, which is at the end. There's playoffs, and like, right? And then, then we have Champions League in December. So there's like those all, all those different tournaments and like how we prepare differently for them. I think that would be big for our fans to know what it feels like. Because right now I don't have to read any books. All I do is just eat, sleep, and train. Literally nothing else. Easy life, brother. Easy life. I think. I think at our point, like, we have like a lot of ideas, and we put, and we always are coming out with stuff, and we're like, all right, we need to produce content. But for us, I think Gage, the most important thing is that we're doing stuff that really isn't out there. I, I think it's gonna be super important for us, making sure that we're not like and we're not just like the kind of one track where we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over because i think that'll burn out really fast like this i I already talked about like we we did this tour the vlogs we came out with they're great they're awesome but it's like we did that and i think we need to figure out okay in which ways can we take the brand and really um and really do we want with the content still focused around volleyball because i think that'll be the difficult part and for us the huge thing is getting involved with the youth um, and being at all these events, because I think the interactive content we do with all these youth is going to be super important. That's why we need to expand our team, and that's why we need to we need to continue having support from our followers and stuff um, in any ways that they can. Whether it's being able to just liking, subscribing, uh, watching our videos, um, or actually being able to like go and purchase some merch or something, because that funds all this stuff. And the more we're able to get to these events, the f- bigger we'll grow, and the more we'll be able to connect with other companies and. I think that's when you kind of you'll see the steam roll uh, uh, start to occur. So for us, like we had an awesome summer. We did exactly what we wanted to do. 
And now, like Gay just said, we've kind of all settled back into Europe, and we're now at a point now where we're sitting here, had a bunch of people reaching out to us, companies reaching out to us about all these ideas, and now we have to kind of take a step back and really think about where we want to go with the brand and the direction because that's also a huge decision. It's like, which, okay, which companies do you want to partner with? These companies might want to, but does it like, are they in line with what we believe in? Are they in line with what we want to do? Athletes that we decide to partner with, what what are they um, about and what in which kind of lifestyle do they live and does it fit something that we stand for? And so with that also, like I said, it's growing our media and content brands and our, and our platforms, but at the same time, monetizing that as well because all this and our plans and all these future plans won't be possible if we're not able to um if we're not able to start funding all that stuff and so far we've done a really good job we have the right people in place our team's freaking awesome we have great people around us and so we just need to continue that but be smart i think you know it's it's so easy to take a big bite out of uh, out of something and really try to do all this stuff at once because you have all these different opportunities popping up, but we need to also be smart about making sure that we take the correct steps and not overstepping anything because when you do that and, and then you put yourself in a hole and you kind of have all these expectations, it can be really difficult. So that's, that's what's been going through my mind. Um, and we've had a lot of different things pop up for us and we have a lot of directions where we can go with stuff but we just kind of want to be smart. And I think for us four here on this call, it's just really important that we are continuing to evolve our content. I think that's the most important part for us right now of what we can do. And, what we, and that's why I'm on gauge all the time. It's like, all right, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing that's kind of gets repetitive and we need to figure out how can we be different about that? How can we create content that's cutting edge in a way and that people want to click on? We've also experienced some issues right now with viewership. Uh, our numbers, like since we've been uploading in Europe, it's been really strange. Gage has been uploading in Bulgaria, and we just haven't been getting Bulgarian the YouTube. So that's is the it? other thing is like if you guys see our stuff, share it and stuff with, with friends because we want to. Uh, <clears throat> that's super important for us when we go and we want to uh, and we want to continue producing stuff. Like that stuff obviously is super important for us, um, and so please like i said any way you can support we uh we appreciate it and that's why joe's a ceo right there yeah man i mean <laughs> dude, oh, dude. Rado, all right, rado's over here he, he are before what do the uh is most of your team married or in relationships yes yes i would say like a big portion of the team is in a relationship. I think few of them are married and have kids. I think it's three of them. I'm, and everyone else has a girlfriend. Yeah. We're we're coming to Serbia in middle of November, second week in November. We're playing the Kra the second team from Serbia. Oh, can I come see you? No. Please. No. <laughs> I, I hope you can. I'm hoping that you're free. That would be awesome if you can. A funny thing about New Year's, because we're talking about that. So I heard about something, a plan that I was not involved in, but it's okay. A, some New sort Year's, of gathering. We, that we, we want you of. to come. We, we didn't think that you wanted to come hang out with us now that you're National Player of the Year. Wait, what, wait, what is the plan, Joe? Oh my God, my kids are not too. This is all Stein. I have not agreed to anything. Stein's oh, yeah, trying I, to get. Uh, Stein Stein's trying to get you yeah, together. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. I'm. I don't, I'm chilling. Zana Stein's, might be here anyway. Stein's trying to get uh, a huge group of people to his house in Amsterdam. Oh, that's okay. Okay, I heard. Yeah, you. I don't think I was invited. Yeah, I never. I don't think I was invited. It's <laughs> but okay. it's okay. Rado, do you wanna? Do you wanna like maybe we could do something? <laughs> Dude, do come something. to Bulgaria. You have the <laughs> best time of your life. I promise you that. We'll see. I think. I think we're so. What do you mean the best time of your hey. life, bro? It's way better than the state. Let me tell you. Parting in Bulgaria, in Europe. Parting in Europe is way better than Mark. That's fair. I think I mean, when I you went know. to Hawaii. Yeah. Dude, clubs in America close at like three or four a.m. No, four a.m. is like way too late. Like, well, you went to you went to Hawaii though. All right, we're in California. If you go to if you go to a big college party like 
Oh, the UCLA. Partying college? He's saying the UCLA. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But I think like if you're, I think there's some spots in America where. You, it, no, no, I'm not saying it's bad because it's nice. Like I love my time in Hawaii, but I just think that partying in Europe is just a little bit. No, but what I'm better. saying is there's you went to Hawaii. Like Hawaii has no frat scene, has no like doesn't have a big like club like crazy scene. If you were to go to like UCLA. Miami or like um, a big college Ohio like, State frat school where it's like SEC school. Indiana or like yeah, these partying places are gnarly. Even USC when I went to a few parties there, that place can get kinda nuts too. Just depends on where you're at. Rado's just trying to party, man. But you but Dude. Europe Europe is fun. Europe is definitely fun. My time in France was like the music is so so good. French music oh, yeah. for people that aren't listening. Or just reggaeton in general. I mean, all I did in college is just just try to be around Joe, you know, just try to make him proud and happy. That's what I went for, you know. He gave me his loop the first week I went to college. I didn't even speak English, and that was it. That's what I saw. He just said he eyes. gave me his lube, like lubricant. <laughs> he gave me his lube. Dude, Sorry. why? Why are you always doing this, man? I don't know. I, I realize just that. Just because you're would. not Joe, you're not. You, just because you're not him, like. Damn it, Gage. I realize like, that I always just say I'm stuff, so and then jealous. people just, especially with our guests, they always just get real just silent. Quiet. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> dude. During we Rado's wrap, time, we gotta wrap this up. This is getting dur- wild. This. <laughs> During Rado's time, he definitely did everything possible to get the most amount of sets. And he got the most amount of sets. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's Rado he got way more sets than anybody else. Rado won on a coach on one with Joe. No, funny thing is, like, people think that I just supported Joe no matter what, which is wrong. It's not true. We just had the exact same opinion. Like, he said something, and I'll agree with it. Because I, yeah, that's what I thought. He was right. It was, it was pretty bad. It got bad. The right, it got, the right side connection. It got bad at times, dude. Yeah. Even Rado would switch. Would He'd be like, yeah, man, I feel like this way. And Joe would be like, start arguing with me. And Rado would be like, yeah. He's like, actually, no, I feel this way. Then switch all, Oh, my God. It was bad. That is so not bad. true. Whatever, man. All right. All right I'm going to rip through. I'm going to rip through. We got a bunch yeah. of questions on Instagram. Just really quickly. Um, we're not going to go through all of them. We're just gonna hit, I'm just going to hit. Just right. choose a couple. Uh, really quickly. Micah Gage, grass threes offensive strategy. Hit it whether or not. Quick offense. Um, we have very different approaches. Like Gage, just wristy as heck, and I just try and go hard and, and deep. You go over him. I, I'm going Let's under go him. You go deep over and him. Hard, and <laughs> Gage just snaps that thing all around. I don't know. Be smart. Warm up with jumbos and. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, I all right. Know. That's hard. You tell Rado, us, Joe. I don't know. In in grass threes, that's the issue. Like teams with us, we always told like you have to go for it from the surface. In grass, you have to be aggressive from the surface line. That's why. Yeah. I think indoor I guess, players translate so well. If you have two really good hitters, I would say just set against the matchup. That's what we did a lot. Yeah. Or it was just exactly. like no matter what's going on, it's like this person has the matchup, and we just use that. Yeah, that's the one thing. Teams didn't do that enough against us either. Teams, I don't know. It'll be yeah, interesting well, to see. You were a good blocker. I still, like, if you put a big guy out there, it still is not, like, super easy, like, slow down. Like, if he's jumping and flying. But I think it'll be really interesting. We'll see. I mean, we'll see where our, all of our futures lay ahead of us. If, we, if we're able to make it back for some of the major tournaments next summer, it'll just be interesting to see how teams... Because this year, going back, they told us that teams were planning to play us this year, this past year. So it'll be interesting. The Wapaka director says that like it'll be interesting to see if they like try like different tactics and how and how they try to like play. I don't feel like they were doing anything like that. They weren't. No, no, no. That's that's what I said. It's like this year, I didn't feel like. (laughs) Rado, you play grass, yeah. Rado, you played grass, yeah. I played one tournament, (laughs) and that was it. Okay. I watched that video. I'm like, oh my gosh, Rado. Oh on. yeah, that's on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's on YouTube. Barefoot? No, no. I... Oh, that was rough. That was a rough. All right, around. Rado. Around. Question for you from Alexis yeah. Ka- Alexis Karpoluk. Uh, opinion on relationships going on. 
That's literally his question, Ferrado. I 100% agree that you should not be in a relationship in college. I don't think, because listen to this, listen to this. Okay, so college is about experience and like getting to know everything before you move into the professional world, basically. 100%. I would agree. Okay. I would agree. It's better to not have a girlfriend in college. You agree or do not agree? I agree. I agree. Yeah, I mean, dude, I'm telling you right now. National player of the year, Big West twice, national champion, blah, blah, blah. I played with Joe Worsley, and I did uh, did all of that because I was single, you know? Gage did it because he was his brother. Okay, let me clear that out right there. If Gage was not Worsley, I do not think he would have had the same career. What? 100% agree with that. I might agree with that. All right, all right. Micah, Micah loves stirring me up. What? He just loves firing me up. Dude, get out of here. I was actually being serious. Okay, Joe. All right, two, two questions in one here, then we're wrapping this up. Right. Why do we pick Jenna and Nicklin? Uh, so we picked them. I th- I think this is more Gage and I than I. <laughs> Mike and Rado are not really aware of this going on. I was answering emails. <laughs> uh, sorry. I did not know what was going on. <laughs> Mike was it. Uh, the biggest thing is, one, we definitely had a connection to them previously, and we're always huge. For us, I think you heard us talk about a lot on the tours. Like, we're huge at just the connections. And if if we don't if we don't get anything else about out of that tour, the biggest like we met some of the coolest families and just the coolest people in general, and we're able to spend so much time with this really awesome people. I think that's what made the like tour like a baby seal. Yeah, <laughs> we met some crazy people, some like awesome, just fantastic, like loving people. They like I don't know. It was just like some that was the best wire. part. <laughs> and so for us, like we had previous relationship. <laughs> Jenna's a Jenna's a Hawaii girl. Um, Nicklin, we just have like ties with their family, and they're like they're literally starting and playing on some of the top teams in the country. And for us, it's just a no brainer. It's like we love what they're about. They're super hard working. If you listen to both their stories, it's really similar stories, um, and it just fits like our brand. They're shorter setters, so we just love that. I don't know. There, it was just kind of everything about it. It just was really easy and perfect. And for us, we wanted to be a little bit safe with who we did it at first because. Obviously, they're representing our brand, and we want to do it with people that we understand really well. So that's why we went with that, and I think it was just an easy decision for us. And we're, we'll be looking at men's players at the end of the fall once we start getting into the men's season. So we'll, be we'll looking see at who dudes, we got coming. So. We'll be Mark looking at dudes. Uh, and then everybody has to make, before we sign off, their women's NCAA prediction for who national champion right now. Who's going to win it? Gage. Oh, wow. No, no, no. We start with the guest, Rado. Oh my God, I haven't watched. Oh, Gary, Gabby Curry graduated, so I haven't paid attention. <laughs> Your girlfriend. Rado's girlfriend. Um, wow, well, I don't know. I would say, I would say Texas. Yeah, I would say Texas. Number one seed is a yeah. tough bet. Tough guess there. I'm gonna say I want a Texas Nebraska final. I want to add some final, baby. So I'm, but I'm gonna go. I hope Texas. I really hope Texas wins. Not just because that is some athlete thing, but actually just I'm like, come on, dude. Like, for all these years, after all these semis and finals, I'm like, this is like the perfect opportunity, guys. Like, come on. Come on, man. You're better. Joe? Charlie Wade. Mike. No, Mike, you go. Ooh. I'll, I'll wrap it up all with right. my guess. <clears throat> Prediction. My pick is going to be the Buckeyes. Ohio State. Ohio State? Huh? Dude, okay. that, they They've been off to a decent start right now. <laughs> um, really? Wait, yeah, who? they're they're top three or four right now. They're four. No, they're not. They're fourth. They're tied yeah. for fourth. No, they're not. Yeah, I literally was second guessing because like I don't think they have a girls team. If the Buckeyes win, that would be. They have a girls team. team. Yeah. Yes. It's I've Ohio State. Heard. They have everything. They got the, like the Sweet Sixteen I've never, last well, year. I've never. They got like co badminton teams probably. That's insane. Dude, they got all the sports though. All right, well that's Dude. hilarious then. That's hilarious. The best gym. Oh my god. The Buckeyes. Oh, that is a really nice gym, dude. So it was, a, no, it was amazing, dude. Dude, for the brand, you guys went Texas. Frick. See, the we're thing going, is between Nebraska and Texas, I think Texas is the better team. Like I look at just like I just say it. I think I think it's Texas. I think te- say it. I we have to go for the brand and the the uh, I really think it's between Texas and Wisconsin. That's who I think it's between. Um, 
because I don't know the Nebraska. They got they got a lot of players. They got a lot of ballers, but I just haven't seen like the team play there yet. I don't know. I'm gonna go Texas. I'll go Texas. It's tough though. And there we have it. It's final, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well, are those are questions, Joe. Those are the questions. That's all we're doing. All right. Well, we have a bunch. Keep submitting them. People know what to it. do. People know what to do. Look at our story. Bah. You know who. Right. You know who you I know, am. You know who. You we already know. knew. You who know who I. If you guys want to know what the story about that about Jenna Gabriel, look at our last podcast we went on. It. We, we we talked about it a lot. Anyway, Rada. Hey, thanks, man. It's good seeing you, man. I'll see hey, you. Hey, Dr. P's V's. Yeah, of course. Well, we still have to do the outro, Joe, so we can put it in there. But again, Dr. P- Price's electrolytes again. He's at 20 for 20% off. Or again, Out of course, we'll buy our merch. Link in the bio. Support. And Rade, I, I, I can't wait to see you on Christmas on the 6th and 7th. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be sick. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. 24, 25. I know, but for you. Anyways, thanks for hopping on, brother. Shoes. Thanks for having me, finally. Shoes All right, Rado. Pleasure talking to Ratto again. I haven't seen that guy since. Well, when's, the last time I saw Ratto was National Championship. Because after the National Championship, what happened was your lives together are now. Obviously, when you're a foreigner, it's very different from then because he's going back to his country. But your lives go in like this direction. As you guys know, like even like just being at the end of the year, what people don't realize is like at the end of the year, for example, it's like, yeah, you still have to go back for finals and stuff like that. But now your life practice all this. Your life is like not the same after that. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're coming back for the next year, you're the end, like the randomly end of- go into the locker room and like someone's stuff's gone. And you're like, oh, they came in and already cleaned up. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. It. Yeah. And then, like it's you have to schedule of like, oh, maybe I can go clean my locker out here or there. Exactly. And you like come in, you clean it out twice, and then that's it. Yeah, exactly. It's even crazier overseas. Literally, it dropped. People leave that night. Oh, overseas is ridiculous. It's like they leave that night. You've been like with each other the entire year. And just, the boom. entire year, every single day, like you eat a lot of meals together, and then it's like the ball drops. You never see this guy, guy again in your life. You, you don't hear a word from him. They're gone. So they are on a train or plane, and they are gone like that next day. If we didn't, yeah, like that was the thing about. Like, me kind of, like, when I kind of realized coping, like, okay, I'm done with Hawaii, I'm done with all this. It wasn't, I realized that once I left, it wasn't when I left, but my, like, when I left, it wasn't that sad. And I realized, I was like, why is it not, like, that sad? Like, went through all this, we had all the success and did all this. I was like, because the life I'd been living for the last two weeks before I left the island wasn't the life I'd been living. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, like, if I left, it was, it was, I lived, like, two different, like, you know, like, it wasn't the same, so it wasn't as nostalgic for me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, the National Championship, right, we go and we do the parade and stuff. And then I stay for another, like, two weeks or so after that just to be, like, with my girlfriend and my friends and stuff like that. And I realized, I was like, it's not – It's and I was like, I, when I was leaving the island, I was like, I'm leaving college, here I go. And stuff like that. This is where everything that happened and never really hit me. And it still really hasn't. Or I don't know when it ever will. But well, you're really good at like being in the present, and now you're attacking such a new challenge that you don't have a lot of time to reflect. Yeah, well, sometimes it hits me. Like if I don't play well, like I'll admit, like if I don't play well, sometimes like it can like consistently, especially over here. Like like back home. Here's here's how I view. It. Here's the difference between college and what from a newcomer. I think this is, this is maybe a good insight here. The difference between college and the pros for me has been hit me like a like a truck because I've been told by Rad, I've been told by all these people like like obviously you're a professional athlete if you don't do your job they're gonna get rid of you like that like not like that but like I'm like okay so I'm coming in this league this league's get turning pretty pretty good I'm with a lot of, I'm with excellent beings on my team one of my guys leaving for China like the, the, we're a solid team in like a solid solid league and I'm like okay how long if I don't play well because I had like three or four practices in a row. Where I wasn't as good as I wanted to, and it affects like you get really, really down, and then I come home. And it's nice, but like, and then I go back, and that can be I can get anxious on the court and stuff like that. I'm like, I just don't like feel the same, you know. Back back in college, everyone knows you're good. They're gonna give you way more. They're gonna give you way more room. Everything like, like and like I said, you, you, there's no time in in professional, right? You have four years or five years, however you want to take it in college. Here it's like, either do or they're gonna get someone else because there's 
70, 80 year other liberos just as good that can take my spot or something like that. You know, they, there's so many other good players out there. And I think that's one thing that I'm learning is like, it's like obviously you got to produce, but also at the same time it's hard. Like I'm also, and then I realized, okay, I'm also in a different freaking country. Like I'm so far away from everything and just everything kind of swirls at once. And I've never been homesick in my life ever, ever. But for a little time here I was, and I was like really, really down and stuff. And I kind of, I remember today, finally started playing really, really, really well today. And I think one thing I realized, I was like, just smile. Just go out there, just be yourself and just smile, you know? And I think that's, and I just kept repeating that. And that just kind of helped me through everything. And then just play, play a lot better. And just relax, too. Like, I've been trying to, like, do all this extra stuff. I'm like, that's just not you. Like, don't do that. Just do what you're, do what got you there. And get better at that, you know? And then I think that's just one thing that I've noticed. I mean, how is it for you guys at all? I don't know. I mean, your first year, your fourth, what, third year now? Joe? It's like, I, it's, I just, I don't even pack, dude. People are like so crazy about when they leave, they like throw parties and stuff. I'm like, I just, I'm leaving tomorrow. I, just, I packed 30 minutes before I had to come over here. Well, and you know like, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like, all right, just back to Germany. Like, got here. It was so early. I don't know. It was just, the thing. What I think that one of the things was too was just the summer that we had made it so hard to leave. It, it made <laughs> it hard to leave for sure because we had so much fun and the life here is just so much different from what we experienced this entire summer. I think something that like I really appreciate though about this is like like Ga- like Gage like you're finding out it's like you have no choice but to like grow and you just like even like the little the little lesson that you learned today of like telling yourself to smile and like be yourself or like the little lesson that you learned that like just do what you do you don't learn those like here you're learning a new lesson like every day and like you don't learn those in college because things are just you're not pushed as far out as your of your comfort zone as you think you are and like here i just love like like, yeah, it's tough to leave Hermosa Beach where you live with your friends and, like, super close to your girlfriend and surf every day. And, like, you have a great life. And, like, that's super nice. And that's comfort. But, like, then I realized, like, man, I can't wait to be uncomfortable again because you just learn so much. And perspective is, like, so valuable and it's so hard to come by sometimes like you because – you can't read about perspective as much as you can like get it from living and learning and just putting time into something and then realizing like, wow, I learned so much from this experience. Um, and like, I'm just stoked to be back over here because it's like, dude, I just remember how much I learn a day and like how much new things I'm realizing about myself or about the world or about um, people. And you just get it through such a different lens. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. I think like when the, when it's all said and done and when we get settled down, I think we're going to be so grateful for that as well because it's tough always being on the move. Like we live su- out of suitcases and even buying like bedding seems like, man, I'm just going to have it for a year and then throw it away or like a desk or like, there's no place to put our stuff. It's just like you're just living like a nomad. And that that's tough too, but – it's also just we learn so much out like no. everyone learns a lot out of college but we get a lot thrown at us and you have to learn a lot what what is Poland like because I know I know Germany is absolutely beautiful and like Ger- Bulgaria is beautiful but the city itself unless you're like really like a downtown strip it's not the most prettiest thing you know and the way of life is way different here in Bulgaria and I know Germany, a lot of stuff is very, very beautiful, and like outside the city, it's amazing. It's incredibly beautiful here, um, and it's also Germany's also affected by not affected but heavily like Western culture and stuff like that. Like, so what's Poland like? Because I've because I've heard mixed reviews on it. So I'm actually in like one of the biggest cities in Poland. Mm-hmm. So it's very much more similar to an American lifestyle than you'd think just yeah. because cities are just cities and when it's when you get into the countryside where it gets to like whoa this is poland like that's when you start to realize like stuff like that um 
but it's nice. It's super nice. I like it a lot. It's um, the weather's been beautiful. I know it's gonna get cold and start snowing, but the weather so far is super nice. I live right across the street from a park with like a bunch of lakes. Um, I went slacklining with a guy that was out there with Mitch Stahl. He came over this weekend. We had sushi from a sushi bar that Jonah Safe uh, recommended as like one of the best sushi bars he's ever been to. Um, and Did it was you really concur? good. It was really good. I don't like sushi, and I tried some of Mitch's stuff. And Mitch was like, this is pretty legit. And it's like a lot more city like. So they have a bunch of different foods and all that kind of stuff. Um, Something that I do appreciate is when English isn't someone's first language, there's just something like special about the way that they phrase their sentences that like I really I really appreciate because there's no time for like nonsense. Like they say things in an interesting way that make you think and like grasp like something that you thought you realized or something that you thought you knew your whole life in a different like perspective and also that they like they only say what needs to be said that's true like because my whole team's polish so i'm the only foreigner right now as of right now we're getting two foreigners um gonzalo quiroga who played at ucla he's from argentina oh, and uh, thomas rousseau who plays for the belgium national team um and is obviously belgian um but right now it's me and a bunch of Polish guys. So it's like the whole practice is in Polish and they'll just like phrase stuff to me. And I'm like, I never thought about it like that. Or like, and they'll like translate the coach's stuff just in the most like, just like bear, like he'll talk for 30 minutes and then I'll get like 15 seconds. And I just get what needs to be said and no bull, like there's no bull. And I really like that as well. I think it's really cool. There are some times where <laughs> – this is my last thing before I wrap it up here, but there'll be some times where I'm like, I'm tired of just condensing sentences. <laughs> there'll be like and guys switching actually, your grammar exa- all around. Yeah, and... exactly. And like, there'll be guys who barely speak English next to me. I'm just like, screw it. I'm <laughs> just speaking full English. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like yeah, and then and I, know I was exactly like, exactly what you're saying. I'm just like, I'm just keep saying. talking. I just look at them, and then and then they're just like. Oh, they keep nodding. And I just start looking forward and just talking. Yeah. <laughs> and they have no idea what I'm saying. This, I'm is, like, this is what I mean by, like, I'm, it has nothing to do with how you're treating us. Just I'm so glad that you understand these things. Like, it's so cool that, like, now we're on the same page where you understand, like, that there's a real... Like, you just said, like, oh, I'm speaking full English. Like, and I know exactly what you're saying. We're like, you're at, like, other people would be like, full English. There is no, like, what do you mean, full? You're speaking full English. It's like, no, there's a big difference between how we usually talk and us being like, dude, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna speak full English. And like, whatever you guys pick up, the tad bits you guys pick up, but this is more for me than for you. That's true. Yeah. I'm just like, I, I know he has no idea. I'm so tired of like, just making this. I was like, I'm tired of these cucumbers and chicken bread. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Well, guys, I think I actually this is like I really enjoyed this podcast. Just kind of talking. With I did bros. too. I did good. too. It's always good just talking with the guys, and we've learned that Rado's love for Joe has not simmered down whatsoever. It's never wavering. Exactly, an everlasting fire. It's like the Olympic flame. Bro, Joe, it was Worsley. crazy. He would he would legit like just bring me food and stuff. Like he would bribe me so much for sets. I thought that no, is, is it strictly about the sets or does he he really it's a joke a, a lot of it too it's just like a joke because yeah, everybody yeah. gave him <laughs> it's one of those things I, where where you make fun of him and then he like takes it on because he's like dude I'm I gonna thought, push sorry, this sorry. no go 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 sorry well I thought that Rattle was joking when he said oh it's because your gauge is your gauge your Joe's brother you get away with everything Turns out he was actually like. There's one time where we got in a screamy match in practice, and like I actually think he feels that way. Like I was shocked. No, it's, and I I was. It's not that you get away with everything. The the comment he said that I agreed with was that like, there's a certain worsliness in you that oh, allows yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. to have like have success with doing stuff that other people wouldn't have success doing, with mm-hmm. doing like part of their lifestyle, and I agreed with that. I was like, yeah, like because at the end of the day, what would that be? In the air, for example, like your libero diet. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah. other people might not be able to get away with that. But because you, just your upbringing, it's like you can do that. And, like, when it's time to go, it's go time. And, like, you can block out whatever it is and, like, and just go. And that's, yeah, that's fair. And that's, like, part of it. And I would agree True. with you. What he said I also think of all three of us. It's, it brings up something. This is the last thing that I've got to close. We were just carrying. <laughs> yeah, but this still, has been a really good podcast. I really. One thing we're all really good at, and like you said, it was all from our upbringing. Is when I go on a volleyball court, I forget about everything outside of the volleyball court. Like I'm really good at that, actually. And it, and some people are not good at that at all. And I always yeah. found, and I know all you two are the same way. But when I'm on the court, I can just forget about everything and just. That's, that's so that's, true, dude. That's I fr- why. I literally forget about every other thing in the entire world. Yeah, like I could be on a if I'm on the volleyball court, I forget about any, like literally anything else. Totally, I forget about even during school when it's like you're so stressed with like even if it's finals, like I'll hit the court and I'm like just can breathe and like it's like so nice. Sports is definitely a way. Even bass, pickup basketball ha- became that for yeah. me at, vo- yeah. at um, UCLA as well. Where like, when I was going through like some stuff with external sources that I couldn't control, and like I'm just like, oh fuck, this is like tough. I would just go play basketball all day long, dude. Like that's why like when volleyball isn't going good, at least for me, when volleyball isn't good, it takes such a big impact on my life. Like, if it's consistent, like, obviously, I have terrible practice all the time. If it's, like, not, like, playing well at a couple games, something like that, in a row or something like that or anything, that's why, for me, that's where I struggle with most, for sure. Um, I for you. I feel like, for me, it's a little bit better off because there are some people where volleyball is, like, just everything. And I feel like we can also enjoy, like, the normal yeah. parts of life that people don't find, like, as much joy in, like, yeah. yeah. Just stupid stuff. Like I can be, I can be at home and like forget I'm even a volleyball player. Like often, right? And just be like, oh, this is so funny. Or like just be in everywhere that we are. Just be present. Yeah. Yeah. There's some that grow and just how people develop. Or you'd be surprised. Some volleyball play. players, it's a lot worse than what you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, guys, thanks again. If you want to support us, please again, and be electrolyted. Doctor Price electrolytes at us. It's from twenty for twenty percent off. Help support us. Some money gets kicked back to our way. And you, and you, I was going to say electrocuted. And you get electrolyted. And again, if you want some swag, I'm wearing it. I know everyone else. Electrolyted is an interesting. Or hydrated would be an easier way. Electrolyted just stays with the, with the customer, I feel. Okay. Um, and also get some merch, guys. Check out the merch. Link in the bio for all of this. Again, help support us. We love you guys. And uh, just remember, if you can't handle the heat, goddamn kitchen. This has been another episode presented by Out of System.